Welcome back guys. So I, I find it funny, this is pretty fitting that I'm using my red, white, and blue container, obviously not in the right order, but for this very kind of like American project, which is this battery magazine. So I printed these original two like literally a year and a half ago, I think. And this was out of, I honestly can't even remember. Uh, this might've been H and H filament or one of the other ones I think went out of business. But I printed this quite a long time ago. There's a ton of ghosting in it because it's kind of a semi-transparent, so it really shows ghosting. And I was doing a lot of work on the FT5 back then, and I had very few printers. So it didn't they didn't come out quite as I had hoped. So I went ahead and made two new ones. This one's already fully ready to go. It's even loaded with the uh, with the batteries, which I'll show that in a minute. And I just did two different two-tone colors. So I'm gonna show you guys the print. I'm gonna show you what you need. And I'm gonna show you how to put it together. Uh, I think I can do all that, yeah. I do know, I think he made some changes on the one part, but it won't matter for our intents and purposes. But yeah, this was just super fun to do. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and send these to my brother uh, as like kind of a late Christmas, I guess. I meant to send these early. I meant to film this video like months ago. But I guess not months, maybe like two months ago. So that's months, I guess, plural, whatever. Been meaning to film this, having gone around to it, but now we are. So what do you need? Obviously a 3D printer, and you obviously need some AA batteries and some filament. Aside from that, all you gotta do is go on a Thingiverse, download the files, I'll put a link for those down below. You guys can go ahead and check it out. There are a few remixes, so if you have like a small printer, you can uh, print like a small version of this. This fit on the um, i3 Mark III, that's what these ones were printed on. Again, these older ones were printed on the FT5. Aside from all of that, you're gonna need some AR-15 springs, magazine springs to be exact. And there is a dead spider in that bag. That's gross. Uh, so these were these are pretty cheap. They come in a pack of five or 10, I think is what they come in. You get them a lot cheaper and it was like you know, 15 bucks or something from Brow Brownells. I don't know, it's an online uh, gun shop. So you can go ahead and check them out. I'll put a link in down below for their stuff. Not a foot link because they're just a random company. It's just who the, the designer recommend to go through. And it was also the best price I could find online for AR-15 springs. If you can find them any cheaper, then great. So you're gonna need those, and you're gonna need a pair of hefty wire cutters. The little side snips that you use are not gonna work. I did ruin a pair. Yes, I did try it with some side cutters. Did not work. So I do have here a, a more substantial set of cutters, or if you have like a Lyman pliers, those would work also as well. But this stuff is pretty hard to cut, so you're just gonna need to do that. And the reason why I say you have to cut it is because in their current state, they are way too, uh, there's way too much resistance to get this to hold a bunch of batteries. And I wanna say there's 12 in this, and it got a little bit tough with how long I have the spring. And these don't work like, this is not gonna be like mind-blowingly well. It works pretty good. You kinda gotta give a little bit of nick here, a, a knock here and there, just to get it moving again. But it is a pretty stinking cool way to store some batteries for any of the gun enthusiasts in your life. So let's go through the parts. We're gonna use the red one here. This will be a little bit easier to kind of show off. And it's only three parts, which is pretty easy. So you obviously have the main magazine. One big part, uh, this is printed at 100% infill, and this is no support needed for this one. It's great. Then you have the bottom plate, so like the butt plate of the magazine. It has a hole in it because you do have the option to put a, a screw in here. I didn't. Um, I, when I send my brother to my brother, I might tell him, hey, if you want to put a screw in this to keep it closed, you might want to do that. But uh, this butt plate just slides right on there. Uh, and then you have the follower which is this piece right here. This is actually what is going to be moving up and down inside of the body of the magazine, and that is what is going to follow the rounds, AKA the batteries, and push them up to the top of the magazine. And then here you have this plate, and I am sorry, but I am not remembering the exact term for this bottom plate, but basically the spring is wound down onto this to kind of hold onto it, and it sits below the follower here, and it gets compressed between these two pieces. Again, this just sits in the bottom. Now with the springs here, I, I do actually want to make a bunch of these. Well, I'm gonna make one for my dad, 
my brother-in-law, and my future brother-in-law. So these have a little uh, hook at the bottom of them, kind of like a loop, and that loop fits perfectly onto this bottom plate. So that was just need to sit right onto there, and then the follower has a space in it, which you do have to print support in there, so it's pretty easy to get it out, but just make sure you have decent support settings. And it basically just ends up being like this loosely and the spring gets compressed inside the follower and that is what gets compressed. So basically inside the magazine, it's gonna be like this getting pushed down, which obviously I can't do that. Now, as I said, if you put it in there full size, you'll fit maybe two or three batteries in there before you're not gonna be able to get any more. So this one, again, I'm pretty sure I have 12 in here. Whoop. So as I pull out the one, it didn't actually come up, but I, then I can just give it a knock and then push out the next one and then get they start moving again pretty easily after that. Whoa, yeah, they move really easy after that now. Um, but I think I have 12 in here. I wouldn't mind actually making a larger version of this to be able to fit a full um, magazine spring and then a little bit more, like you definitely easily print that on like a TiVo, the TiVo Tornado, or any of the CR10 variants, the FT5, a big Delta, you know, like the K280, or there's a bunch of other ones, the CMC NC, like Artemis, the big ones like that. Those can easily print stuff like this, especially if you want to make it as a bigger one, but could be something for someone to do a remix, make a nice big one of these. All right, so anyway, so to assemble this, we're gonna assemble it with the full spring, just cause I don't feel like cutting another one down right now. Um, I will before I end up shipping this out. Or maybe I will do it, I don't know. Uh, so basically the follower is keyed, so it's just going to slide right down into it like that. Sorry, I might've been a little bit loud. And then you're gonna have your spring sit down in there. They're gonna have the bottom plate, which again clips in there. And it also is keyed, so it just fits right into the bottom of this. And then you just get the bottom plate and slide it on, and that holds that bottom plate in, the, the butt plate here does. Now what you can do here is that if you do put the screw in there, that will keep that bottom plate from shifting at all, and that will hold this bottom, the butt plate of the magazine in there. And now you have a functional magazine. You honestly could just do it like this if you take off this 14X AA and the, the battery mag, you could just have a simple replica magazine that's kind of cool looking. I, I, I really do actually dig this design. It was a very interesting uh, design by this guy. But yeah, I mean, I could probably do like just pushing my, my thing in there, maybe four, like before it gets really hard, five, you know, that's about a third of the way down there. And then it, that's really tension starts getting a lot. And I also wouldn't put that much tension on the batteries. To begin with, you don't want to squish them because if you leave them in here long enough, they will get squished, they will deform and then you kind of can't use them because you really shouldn't use deformed batteries. Once it's fully loaded, it's actually pretty heavy, to be honest, it really is. Um, but it, it's, it's legit, I mean, you can easily just leave that in your drawer, in your junk drawer, instead of putting batteries just kind of thrown in the drawer, throw them in a battery mag. I think someone did also remix for a uh, AAA version, which was uh, interesting, I didn't uh, do that one yet. Maybe I'll do that and send that with him. And then just to recap on filament, so these, again, these were both printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. The black is Ziltec uh, Matte Black, and the red is the Ziltec Red PLAs. This white was a random white that I reviewed uh, like back in December. I don't actually remember the brand of it, but just regular old white. I just wanted to do a white and black one, and then since I had the black already loaded, I did a black and a red, because I really, really, really like the red uh, from uh, Ziltec. It's just a really nice color and I just enjoyed it. Again, this one was just kind of like a smoke colored one from I don't know where. And also again, the tolerance in this one was, it doesn't run as smoothly. So if you do have elephant footing, be sure that you use something like a deburring tool. This is a Chuck Hellebuck's deburring tool. And just make sure you get around those sides so that it slides nice and easily because if the follower doesn't slide easily, it's going to get caught up. You also could just sand it down a little bit uh, and again, with no support, and there shouldn't be any real crossing. I did do avoid crossing perimeters just to keep the nozzle from crossing the middles. I didn't want any of the start and stop points to be inside of the the mag well, or the inside of the magazine, just to again make sure that the follower could freely move through it. Twelve. 
yeah, so 12 fits in there and then we'll look and see how the magazine is actually quite small in comparison to what a full one is. So I'll pull up a full one here. I'm using just uh, maybe a little bit more than half maybe. It's a little bit more than half. It for me is the, the perfect size for the 12 rounds for 12 for 12 batteries to be in there. Again, you can go less if you want to. You can go more if you want to, but it's just 12 seem to be the good number uh, for me without, again, really squishing those too much. I probably could get 13th in there, but getting that first one out is a little tough. Yeah, even, even with that being so short, 12 is 12 is a stretch to get it in there. So you probably could cut that down a little more, which pretty much means you could get two magazines out of one spring if you cut it properly. And I know you can buy one spring, and I think they were like $3 a piece if you bought one spring, but if you bought a pack of 10, they were like one or two bucks a piece. It just, economically, it just made more sense for me just to buy the whole big pack. And eventually, I'll make these for a bunch of people and uh, give them out as gifts to friends and whatnot. Hope you guys enjoyed the project. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys print this out. Uh, and if you do, post a make. I love when people post makes of things that people make online. That way you can kind of see what they're using it as and like color combinations that people use, things like that. If you guys want to see more awesome projects like this, become a subscriber, hit that button right down below and hit the bell icon to get a notification when I upload new content during my live streams. If you want to support me financially, help me fund projects kind of like this, go ahead and become a patron. Don't even dollar more, I greatly appreciate it. $2 or more, you guys get part of the sticker squad, so I've started that recently. And by doing that $1, you guys get access to the after show, and that's available to all my patrons. So I do that after all my new videos, so be sure to check that out. Other ways you can help out, one-time donations. There's a bunch of fill links down below with coupon codes for filaments, like the Ziltec is 15% off using my coupon code down below. That's pretty awesome. So everyone that uses those codes, a little slice of what you buy, ends up coming back here to help me with the channel. I truly appreciate that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, happy printing.